Good afternoon and welcome to the Boston Globe's Juneteenth Film Festival discussion of the film Harriet, the incredible true story of one of, of America's greatest heroes, Harriet Tubman. From her escape from slavery to the dangerous missions she led, setting free hundreds of slaves through the Underground Railroad. I'm Kimberly Atkins Store. I am senior opinion writer and columnist for the Boston Globe. I am also the inaugural columnist for The Emancipator, a joint venture between the Boston Globe's editorial board and Boston University's Center for Anti-Research, uh, Anti-Racist Research in reimagining 19th century abolitionist newspapers to address the anti-racist solutions of our time. And I am thrilled to introduce our outstanding panel to discuss the film Harriet. Athena Vaughn is a longtime leader and activist in the LGBTQ community in Boston and beyond. Among the many hats she wears she, uh, is that of uh, the trans health navigator at Fenway Health Institute, where she advocates for greater healthcare access for transgender individuals. She's also co founder and executive director at Trans Resistance Massachusetts, a nonprofit dedicated to fighting for the rights of transgender communities in the state. And she's assistant director at Transgender Emergency Fund. She's a Boston Foundation Boston Neighborhood Fellow and also a legend in the ballroom community known as Athena West. Malia Lazou is lecturer in the Technological Innovation, Entrepreneurship, and Strategic Management Group at the MIT Sloan School of Management. She was formerly the Executive Vice President, Chief Experience and Culture Officer, and Regional President at Berkshire Bank, where she worked to generate wealth for communities by expanding access to capital and spurring economic growth, especially in communities of color that have traditionally been left behind. Malia has launched and led a number of socially responsible business accelerators across Boston, including Accelerate Boston, which helped launch over 20 minority businesses in its first five years and continues to help minority entrepreneurs raise capital today. And Paul Taswell is an award-winning costume designer for stage, film, and television, whose costume design for the film Harriet helped bring Cynthia Erivo's portrayal of the abolitionist icon to life. Paul is known for his nearly three decades of work in theatrical costume design, including for both of Lin-Manuel Miranda's Tony Award-winning original Broadway productions of Hamilton and In the Heights. Paul has designed for such renowned companies as the Metropolitan Opera, the Bolshoi Ballet, the English National Opera, the Public Theater, the National Theater, the Kennedy Center, and so much more. And he has received an Emmy Award for NBC's The Wiz Live, which was incredible, as well as a Tony Award for Hamilton among his many awards and accolades. I want to thank you all for joining us and note that Athena should be joining us shortly. But I want to begin by saying, first, I want this to be a discussion. So I want you to feel free to, to jump in and talk to each other as we move forward. I just will be the traffic cop here, but I wanna get this discussion started with Paul. Can you tell us um, what it was like to create costumes, to tell the story of someone who was not only a real person, but who is this uh, larger than life icon of almost mythical proportions when it comes to, particularly when it comes to black liberation movements. Where did you even begin and what was front of mind for you in doing this work? Well, Kimberly, thanks for asking that question. I think that it's um, you know, a very important question. Um, it's very daunting, uh, to be frank, uh, to start to dig into how to represent it's both a woman that we, uh, Harriet Tubman, is a woman that we have a good number of images of her uh, from her later life, uh, specifically. And then there's also the legend of who she was. And um, when you know, you're, anyone is, att is try attempting to show the life and, and be honest about uh, the truth telling uh, or the, uh, the storytelling about a person that actually existed, I think that you you uh, walk a fine line between you know what what is uh, compelling for the audience versus what was actually true, um, and you know at, with, for Casey Lemons who 
uh, was one of the adapters of the screenplay, and she was also the the director. Uh, so our our fearless leader. Uh, it was important for her that Harriet be represented as this, um, you know, a a power figure uh, that we see her. And actually, it was you know the, this the story of Harriet Tubman that had not been focused on Harriet as a slave, but Harriet as uh, a, you know, a, 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 a self-made freer that she, you know, she freed herself and then she uh, was the power behind freeing uh, many others uh, in her life and, and people that she didn't know as well. So, you know, what, what it, you know, boiled down to, or, you know, what, what we came to decide was that, you know, how do we represent Harriet Tubman as a superhero figure, uh, you know, and as an American figure as well, uh, which, you know, when you, you know, the, the portrait, portraits of her, the, you know, the photographic portraits of her are very powerful. I mean, she, you know, is, is uh, very forthright, staring into the camera, uh, very strong. But there, you know, as we were telling the story, it, it was important for us to uh, relay the, the activity, the action that, that went into what she was about. I mean, she, you know, she was... Uh, five foot or a little bit less than five foot, you know, so her stature was very, very small, uh, but yet she was able to make multiple trips from the north down to uh, where, where she uh, grew up and, uh, you know, to, to bring back, you know, all of her passengers and it was really remarkable. And Malia, I want to uh, talk to you first. I want to get uh, your thoughts about what connected, what in this film connected to you, uh, particularly about the work that you're you're doing today as a leader uh, in pushing for social justice. But I also want to bring up, uh, I hope you don't mind, in, in our discussion before we started, you brought up a really important point, which is for many of us, sometimes watching films like this can give us pause. We have to come to it in the right moments because it can be triggering. Um, how did you work through that? And what about this film resonated most with you? Thank you. And um, it's wonderful to be here. Hello, everyone. And, you know, I'll first start by saying that I think for a lot of us, these movies are triggering. Um, you know, having the director, you know, Paul, as you said, your fearless leader, you know, knowing that, you um, she was a woman of color, right? Like, like knowing that there was going to be compassion coming from the other side um, of the camera, I think is helpful, right? You know, like it's still a Hollywood film, but at the end of the day, there's someone there rooting for our humanity on the inside mm -hmm. and at the highest level. So I think that was helpful. Um, I also watched it with like one of my best girlfriends who's, you know, also a a black woman and so we were able to you know sort of be there together i think you know for all of us in organizing I, harriet is the ultimate organizer right i mean you think about everything that you've done whether it's organized marches or you know organized law changes or organized the election of people and you've never had to walk a hundred miles not knowing where you're going and not knowing who is going to kill you in order to do that and you know, to do that multiple times in her leadership in the Civil War, um, that I, I think for folks like me, um, you know, who see ourselves as organizers centering our people first, that's what she, that, that's what she did, you know, and I think the last thing I'll say is it was great when she runs into the house of like the Philadelphia um, anti-slavery, you know, group or whatever, and you then saw the interplay right, between the advocates who also oftentimes are Black folks and the organizers, right? Um, and there was that other scene, right, where she was like, y'all ain't never been a slave. Like, don't tell me it's too dangerous because it's too far or whatever she says, right? And I think those are moments, thank goodness, with such less, you know, we have a lot more than Harriet had, um, but those are moments that felt very familiar um, to me without the dogs and the, you know, recognizing the difference. Yeah, and so Paul, tell us a little bit about how did the, the, the 
where we are in the world today factor in when you made the choices about how to portray um, not only uh, Harriet Tubman's, I don't wanna say character because she's a real life person, but not only portray her, but also the other characters within the film. How did, how do you think of it in terms of the viewer and, and the time that the viewer is in? Sure. Uh, I mean, I think that uh, we have, you know, uh, up to the point where we created Harriet, there have been a, you know, a huge number of films that have been made about the slave story, you know, wh whether it's, uh, you know, the original Roots or the, you know, the, the second time around, the remake of Roots, uh, tw 12 Years a Slave, you know, there, there, there are many points of view uh, that have been created uh, as, a, as a theatrical presentation, as a, as, you know, as a filmic presentation. Um, this was an opportunity and actually, you know, the, I, I believe that there, there might be one, maybe two other films about Harriet. I know that there's one that I believe that Cecily Tyson was in, but um, this was the, uh, the newest, the most modern telling of that story. And I, you know, it, it came on the front end of much of the work that we actually uh, saw take place uh, and advocacy that we saw take place and are continuing to, to see take place uh, now today. Uh, because it was it was uh, you know all shot in in 2018 you know and then and then uh, uh, opened in 2019, so uh, you know I I think that it uh, the you know like as I was saying with with Casey's point of view on 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 Harriet's story that it really wanted to center the the thought that Harriet is the, you know it, it is a superhero that's going to carry. Uh, uh, the, the rest of her followers forward. Um, and I think that that is really what is the most empowering for modern people to hear right now as well is, you know, the, the, to come from nothing and within, you know, the, the power of your own being to be able to uh, create and flourish uh, within a life that uh, is full and, and free is is really what we are about. I mean, that's that, that's what uh, black people and other people of color are about as we uh, live as Americans. Um, and so I think that it really speaks to uh, Harriet's story definitely, and and at the way the way that we tell it uh, in Harriet the film uh, really speaks directly to that empowerment. Um, and uh, you know, and then you know just how remarkable. A person that she was. I mean, you know, when you when you start to open all of that up and unpack, well, wow, how do you, you know, how does a person uh, realize that within themselves uh, and uh, and carry through? I mean, that that was was quite amazing. You know, Malia, when I think about so many of the justice and equality movements of today how so many of them are led by black women, women of color, black women are at the forefront, everything from Black Lives Matter and movements for um, uh, police reform to uh, gun control, to even efforts as, as in your work in trying to um, build uh, minority entrepreneurship and access to business capital and financial systems. So talk a little bit about that, that junction between seeing uh, as this, this black woman leading an abolitionist movement um, to what we are seeing today and, and how those things connected for you in watching this film. Yes, you know, I think that when we saw Harriet and you're right, I mean, now that we're telling history from a different lens, we're seeing that every movement, there was women, right? There was um, Fannie Lou Hamer, right? There was Ella Baker, there was Mahalia Jackson. I mean, she was the one who said, Martin, tell them your dream, they ain't feeling what you're saying in, that, in DC, right? Um, and so I think women, I, I think there's a fortitude um, to what women have to face under oppression, right? Whether that's 
rape or you, you know what whatever it might be that's very dramatic um that that makes you have to push ahead um you know i think there's also something about um being childbearing right and being the um you know the the people who bear children at in a very evolutionary way right um means that you have to find a place to protect right i mean that's what evolution tells you to do right is to keep your offspring alive um and you know so i think women play a particular role in holding that responsibility um you know for the spectrum of genders you know i don't think we need to get even you know binary here right i think that there's something very natural and um you know within survival instincts that make women the people to do this and then naturally within sectors, you know, black women and women of color will be the ones to step up, right? Um, you know, I think what I also found interesting, and this was something that um, my friend and I were laughing about was when they were in um, the society, right, Harry, like, um, I think you said, Paul, like a self-made, right, freer, like, mm -hmm. she makes it into the society, even though she just freed nine people, <laughs> not even knowing, mm -hmm. right? And they're talking about the need to go to war, right? And it was like, it was a very masculine conversation and Harriet had a very different conversation and it wasn't that she was anti-war, right? She wasn't saying any of that. She was just saying, but what about today? What about the slaves today? You know, and I think that's a question that um, is easy, that, that comes to, you know, especially women leadership a lot because we're faced with dealing with the day to day, you know, and for so many women, I mean, even, you know, black women being a part of the Me Too movement, um, you know, transgendered black women being, you know, the most, um, you know, the, the most at risk, right? And and yes. um, we have so many sisters missing. And, you know, we, we also take the brunt of what isn't working. So it makes sense that we'd be like, fuck it, we'll do it ourselves. <laughs> like, let us just get on it and make this mm -hmm. change. <laughs> No, I think that's absolutely that's absolutely true. Paul, please. Well, I, I was just thinking that you know it, it it is that that position, and that you know, dare I say, she you know she really didn't have. I mean, she she had life to lose, but that you know that she was at the extreme of her life search, and and made the you know made a point of taking you know hold of the reins, and and pushing forward. Um, you know, and, and you know, she she w was the first woman to lead, you know, the, this uh, you know the, all of these uh, Civil War troops, the Union troops, uh, down the Cahambe River because she actually understood, she knew the the trail that they were taking, she knew that waterway because as a little girl she was a trapper. So you know, it's it's really you know, it, the, she continues to top herself. Uh, at, you know, and in what she is able to do, what she is able to accomplish, um, and I, you know, it, it, it's it's definitely you know it's a it's a high bar for other other people, you know, w whether it's man or woman to hold themselves against, but for her to have done that at that time was remarkable. You know, it's absolutely yeah. remarkable. It really is. I mean, I'm thinking about uh, you know, so long, especially New Englanders know well the phrase uh, "live free or die." But that one scene mm -hmm. when she stood up on the bridge, and it's like, oh, that's what it means. Like that's really mm -hmm. what it means. I, I, you know, freedom or death, and these are my choices, and I'm choosing yeah. freedom. Um, you know, Paul, we were talking about this interplay between um, you know, sort of the masculine uh, sense, the masculine energy and, and the fact mm -hmm. that she is this strong woman. And there are times that even in the costuming, you could see the nods to the masculinity. I mean, of course, when she was in the union um, uniform, it, it had that, but also with her hat or with her jacket that she wore. Mm -hmm. Talk about those choices that you made and that she is this woman, but she is also now navigating this world where not only women are inferior, but also Black people. And so she had to make those choices about how she presented in a very uh, careful and thoughtful way. Talk a little bit about that. Certainly. Um, it, I mean, it, it's written, it's documented that Harriet Tubman was a, a master of disguise. And she de developed this uh, you know, trait, I mean, what, what she was able to do uh, in order to right under the radar from slave catchers, from anyone who was, who was trying to uh, get her. I mean, there were posters all over 
tracking her down, you know, with with bounty and you know that you know so she was a wanted woman, um, and uh, it became important to figure out how can I uh, change who I am, what do I what I present in order to take a train, you know, back to the, the place that I, that uh, I'm from or where where she was from. Um, and within that, uh, what I relied on was, you know, capturing uh, uh, the the iconic image of uh, of power, I guess. Um, and s much of that for that period was generated by a uh, masculine silhouette. Um, you know, I, I held myself as I was just, you know, making choices about what her clothes would be and what those disguises would be. I held myself to uh, choosing those silhouettes that that would actually be found within the period, because we're you know we're talking about uh, the the 1830s all the way to the mid 1860s, uh, and in, in covering that, you know, I, I wanted to make sure that we didn't that it didn't become anachronistic, that it was more about how Harriet the character pulled these things together, whether they were hand-me-downs, things that she. Uh, was able to find what she was able to make herself in her own home, um, and, but still from the mind of a woman from the the the, the early to mid 1800s, uh, and then shaping the, those pieces into looks that would both be functional, serve her, be be protective, uh, as well as you know whether it was disguising her. For my interest, it was to set her up in a silhouette that could be powerful, that that could, uh, you know, that, that you know that that could attain some kind of um, allegiance, you know, because she needed to, be, you know, she needed to be able to uh, be seen as the leader in order to carry these people. I mean, and, you know, as, as you see in the film, you know, where she's having, you know, eight or so people trek through a river. You know, all the way up to their necks, and then out to the other side. So, it, you know, the, the 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 terrain was, and we were shooting in in much of, uh, you know, very similar terrain. We were shooting in Virginia, but it actually happened in Delaware. Um, you know, the, we're talking about swamp, you know, swamp land, and uh, you know, it it was, you know, it was a, that was a trying journey. You know, it would be a trying journey for anyone at that time. Um, so I wanted to make sure that it was serving all of those elements in telling the story so that it could all be plausible, you know, and I think that that's, uh, that's what's very important uh, in telling her story. You know, Malia, uh, Malia, at this point, we have this understanding about how important it is for us to understand our history um, and how that informs the president, uh, the present, um, or sometimes the president. Um, but uh, how important that is, that certainly is a part of the Emancipator, which I'm working on, which will launch soon. And these uh, historical uh, biopics are, are an important part of that as well, bringing to light things that people may not have understood from the past, but we still see this pushback today against it. In fact, it's growing from, you know, it was just five years ago that we all expected Harriet Tubman to be on a $20 bill by now, but efforts mm -hmm. to push back on that have prevented that from actually happening. Efforts against teaching uh, history factually, um, are being uh, pushed back as somebody who is not only an entrepreneur and a leader, but also uh, in education. How is that, um, how do you see those things playing out today? Yeah, I mean, I think just as we saw in Harriet, right? That's the push and pull of progress. Um, and, you know, I think Reagan was a response to the civil rights movement, right? You see where there's gains and then there's going to be severe pushback, right? Um, and that's what I think we're seeing here today, right? So I'm not surprised, right? I mean, I, I think that um, anyone in change work, work would know that if it was that easy, Harriet would have done it. You know, and she would have just taken care of it. I, you know, Ida B. Wells would have jumped in, right? And it would have been done generations ago. But the fact of the matter is, is that we're still living in and America still is a deeply racist country. And so whenever you hit that nerve, which is what we're doing right now, and we're sitting on it, right? Movements making sure we're sitting on it. Culture is making sure we sit on that nerve 
you're going to see that pushback. And, you know, that's really what makes these Hollywood, um, you know, these Hollywood films so important, right? Because as much as, um, you know, I'm very proud to be you know, a, a lecturer at MIT, very few people walk through my doors, uh, you know? And so if we actually want to educate, yes, traditional education is important, but so is us changing the narrative. And I think right now, at least what I see is a lot of white people and also, you know, some people of color, um, but just being very surprised at the history that they don't know. Um, and so even with the pushback, uh, you know, we will find ways to continue to tell our stories. And I think that, you know, that is the role for, um, that there is a role there for Hollywood and for movies like Harriet. You know, I worked for Harry Belafonte for several years and he always used to say that, you know, um, artists are the keepers of truth and they can take you there, right? And, and, and I think what we have to do now is politics is a mess. So let's just put it that way, right? To simplify the whole thing. Um, and so the other aspects of society need to step forward and, and correct and, and set the narrative. And I want to um, uh, remind our audience that if you have questions that you would like to ask, you can ask it in the Q&A function and we will get to as many as we can, um, questions about the film, questions about how it relates to the ju social justice movements and liberation movements of today, the portrayal of black women in film, uh, any of those questions from watching uh, the film during our uh, film festival, please ask them in the Q&A and we will get to them at the end of our discussion. So Paul, you Kimberly, now I'm have- I'm sorry, I'm oh, sorry, before you move on to the next please. question, I did wanna just, go back to something Paul had said around the yes. silhouette, um, you know, because one of the things I really appreciated about the film was that um, Harriet was a woman, right? She, she had a feminine side. She, that was who she was, but she was also the lead, you know, she was an army general, right? She was the, the leader of, of people looking to be free. And there were moments in that movie where, her silhouette was so powerful. And, and I think it's the first time we see her in the Cox hat and she's running. And just when you were saying silhouette, Paul, it dawned on me, I was like, right. She had this narrow, like even though she was in a dress, like she still, she looked, she could have been androgynous, you know, if it was just a silhouette, right. um, you know? And so I so appreciate that, that because I think that's part of what we felt when we were seeing her strength and her masculinity, even though, it wasn't like, you know, you put her in like biker, you know, like something comfortable, right? Like, but you narrowed down her silhouette maybe a little bit. I mean, I'm just thinking about it. I'm like, right, because that scene of her running, you know, she looks aerodynamic. Right, right. I mean, I, uh, thanks for bringing that up. I mean, I, I uh, we were talking uh, before we started, just to, we were do, doing a little check-in uh, earlier. And we were just talking about, you know, how to make sense of some of the work that I do for any production that I do. You know, I, I'm responsible for uh, creating the image that it, a, an audience will see, uh, you know, for a character before the character says anything. So, uh, you know, for, for when when you're thinking about, uh, you know, you you get up and you've got plans for the day. You think about what all your plans are for the day, and you dress accordingly so that you can do the work that you need to do. You might also uh, be front loading, uh, you know, the fact that you need to take charge in, let's say, a meeting, um, uh, you know, uh, having a conference, what that, whatever that might be. So you're trying to tap into, uh, you know, you can use th this word, I I icons of uh, of power and leadership. Uh, or softness and uh, and feeling sexy, or you know any of those uh, human traits that you might want to feel uh, that you embody visually. That's what I use as a costume designer in order to tell the story. And for every scene, for every moment, I'm trying to make the best decision about. I'm working to make the best decision about where that character is and where they've come from and how I can best uh, telegraph what's going on internally with the character. Um, and I, you know, th th that applies to Harriet as well and how 
you know, my, my other big thing is creating an arc for the character. And where we, you know, we, when we start with Harriet's character on the plantation as a slave, what she looks like uh, versus where we end up at the very end uh, in, in, you know, first in the red, in the red velvet coat, and then uh, in the uh, in the, the Union uh, officer's uh, cloak, uh, you know, all of those are very calculated in uh, telling the story of Harriet for this film um, because they resonate in different ways. Um, you know, with with that red coat, it was you know really you know hoping to capture uh, like the idea of. Superman, or you know, what you know, our connection to superheroes, which is you know, there, there's heraldry. There, you know, it's it, it, it's like a flag, you know, where you know, it, and and it's like uniforms. Uh, so you know, I, I'm subtly you know carrying the audience into understanding where she is emotionally uh, at, 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 within her story. And I want to, uh, on that subject, I mean, you have worked on uh, a number of per period pieces, very popular ones, including ones where in Hamilton you have people of color who are playing the roles of other real life people who were not people of color. And we have, you know, we had to have Alexander, Alexander Hamilton and Aaron Burr portrayed by men of color, other characters portrayed mm -hmm. by people of color. Talk about how that worked, because in that sense, the costume, uh, in in a way, served a, as a lot of the work to understand these characters in a completely different way. For Hamilton, um, the costume is actually the closest to who the person really was. Right. You know. So then, you know, when you, you know, and it was, it becomes this collage or this pastiche of images. Uh, that are being put together for the audience. You know, for, for Hamilton, you've got, you know, the, a suit that's very similar to one that you might see Hamilton wearing in one of, one of his portraits, you know, definitely with, with uh, uh, Washington, you know, directly out of his portrait. But because it's being worn by a Latinx man, because it's being worn by a Black man, it changes your relationship to the, those clothes, which I think is what is powerful about the show overall. It's you know the words that are coming out of these these characters that we know very well. Uh, we've you know we 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 have met them and uh, and have come to know them through you know history classes and you know and then all, all of our you know our, our American you know uh, uh, mythology you know it it's all it all works together. Um, you know when when you think about say Jeff Jefferson Thomas Jefferson uh, played by Davi Diggs. You know, that again is a silhouette that you would see Jefferson actually wearing in his mm. time. But we've chosen, I, you know, I chose fabrics and colors that were actually pulling on, uh, you know, musical entertainer uh, images you know, like Prince and, and Jimi Hendrix and, you know, and, and yeah. that because we wanted to set him up as this rock star. Um, and so it, it's, it's working on multiple levels and you're taking it in as an audience. And then it's, you know, subtly, you, you have access to who that character is. So I wanna to get to some of our questions again, if you wanna uh, uh, ask a question, you can do it in the Q and A function. Um, and you can ask your questions there and I will get to them as time permits. Uh, one question was, was the character of the young man who began as a slave tracker, but turned to become Harriet's ally based on a true person? Uh, if so, what was his name? Did this switching of sides amongst uh, blacks and whites happen often? The, more the moral dilemmas faced are haunting, but I'm always interested in those who grow. Paul, tell us a little bit about that character and how that uh, came about. Um, the, uh, the I, be I believe the character that she is speaking of, um, uh, it, it was a, I mean, it, it, it's a made up character, if, I, if yeah. I'm understanding what, what the character right. that she's refer referring to. Sure. Um, the, and, and many of the secondary characters within the story, uh, except for those that are names that we actually, uh, you know, have through history, you know, the, the abolitionists, so all of those, those people actually existed. And the way yeah. that, you know, I, the way that I was dressing them 
was uh, inspired by images that I was able to find uh, for them. The, the, you know, th that character that uh, that person is, is speaking of specifically is one that is carrying the, uh, uh, the plot forward. Uh, and so that was a fictional character. Right, but there's this idea that um, right. alliances aren't always what you expect them to be. They were not in right. history as well. Go ahead, Malia. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think, you know, while, you know, I, I don't know if common, right, is the word in the sense that there were, you know, there weren't a lot of folks who would have the trust of white people to do certain things. But like, what we know is that there were a lot of slave revolts that, um, you know, may have been thwarted because of other black slaves who were either scared and, um, you know, of what would happen or would want to curry favor with the master, um, you know, so I think the complexity that this person who asked the question is talking about is very real, you know, I mean, even at that moment with her sister, Harriet's sister, right, how she says, you know, not everyone, you know, can run, yeah. right, and, yeah. and, you know, she meant that we mean that, right, like, there's moments, I, I think, for all of us as people of color who are like, right, like, what are we, you know, what are we talking about, right? Um, mm -hmm. That run to freedom, that run to up north, that run to leave everything you know, like, um, you know, it was as hard then as it would be now, right? And, and I yeah. think that that's something that, um, you know, the, the movie does a great way of portraying. Um, but yeah, so unfortunately, as, um, as the saying goes, you know, not all skin folk are kin folk. <laughs> Right, right, right. Another question we have is, can you talk about the role of faith in this film, uh, the role faith played? Paul, what, what, why don't we start with you? I mean, I, I would start that with, you know, just uh, what happened to Harriet, which was, you know, uh, there was an anvil that was thrown uh, at, at Harriet to stop her uh, when her sisters were, were being sold off of the plantation. Uh, when she was very, you know, much younger, uh, and what what ended up happening, you know, it was pretty gruesome because what what happened was the the, the um, part of her head scarf, uh, it, it was so so brutal that it it pushed into her head, but then you know after she recovered, uh, she would have blackouts, you know, she would have uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, seizures that would then uh, relay spiritual uh, messages to her. Uh, and she, you know, so she used those messages uh, to direct her, you know, as to what her next step was. Um, and, you know, so, so she was able to tap into her own internal spirituality and then, you know, therefore uh, the, you know, the, the higher spirit to, you know, to direct uh, how, how she was going to then lead uh, people out of, uh, out of slavery. And spirituality has always been such an important part of uh, the, the abolitionist movement, so many other social justice movements, um, particularly movements that are led like this one by, by Black women. Malia, talk a little bit about that. Yes, I mean, I think, well, I think the role of spiritual, you know, in the broadest sense, spiritualism um, has long, you know, long found a home in um, the, you know, the decolonization, uh, you know, or the, you know, the unoccupying of, of people in, in the U.S. And, um, you know, I mean, I'm also thinking of the Caribbean and, um, you know, Santeria and, you know, the, the different ways we make sense of, of these new places. Um, you know, Sir Jorner Truth was a spiritualist and um, someone else who also, you know, spoke with and, and, um, and the Lord spoke back as they said, it, as they said in the movie, but, um, you know, I think it plays a huge role because faith is what organizers believe in that, you know, that that's, we have faith in our people, right? So we're saying like, this is worth doing because doing it is going to provide a, you know, a, a good, um, is going to have a lot of benefits, right? Because I believe in the people. I don't believe we're going to recreate um, colonization or, or, or things like that. And, and so I think the stories of spiritualism, mythology even, right? To take it in its most broadest sense, um, you know, I think is important for, for people who lead in this way. Um, 
because whether it's more of a natural approach, right, or it's more of a theological, religious approach, um, healers need places to be healed. Um, yeah. and, and that's, a, and I think that, um, spiritualism and ritual and, you know, communing with your God, th those are all things that, um, allow you to lead through fear and, and through danger. Um, one of the questions that we had, I think I can answer quickly is that, is there any way that Harriet Tubman's $20 bill can be revised, uh, since being discarded the, the previous administration's, uh, treasury department put that plan on hold. All we know so far from the Biden administration is that they have vowed to speed it back up, but there has been no um, uh, clear and, and affirmative plan announced from the White House yet on that. Um, we will certainly be watching that. And the last question in just the, the couple minutes we have left, um, I, I'm going to uh, shorten it a little bit and talk about the difference between uh, the um, uh, Frederick Douglass, for example, whose power came from his speeches and writing, whereas Harriet Tubman's came from her actions. I know it was um, unclear that if she could read or write, and it was thought that it was in part because of the head injury uh, that Paul talked about, that she suffered from being hit by a weight um, in, in an attempt by her family to escape. Paul, talk about that. You had to, th this film had to show action in, in explaining who mm -hmm. she was, not just speeches, um, not just connections to people in power. Um, talk about how that the, you know, how showing her action, uh, the difficulty in that and, and what that meant to this story. Um, you know, it's, I, I uh, you know, th this, the, Harriet was not a film that was, you know, it was showing, you know, Harriet Tubman sitting at a desk writing about uh, how she was going to uh, carry slaves to freedom. Right. You know, it was about, uh, you know, a, a, a very, uh, you know, driven uh, w woman that felt the need, you know, and, and it started with her family, you know, that, you know, the, the intensity of, of love, uh, she felt the intensity of love for her family to pull them all out of uh, and liberate them from slavery. Uh, and I think that that uh, was an active thing for, for Harriet. I mean, that was, you know, um, you know, something that could only be done within her control uh, in a way that she could do that, which was to show, to show other people how to, really how to free themselves. Yeah. I mean, when you see that, well, there is one, one scene uh, with, uh, within, within the film where you've got this, uh, it's, it's this mob of slaves coming up over uh, the bank and down the field which is, you know, that shooting that even on that day was mind blowing. It was, you know, it, it was so uh, elevating to see all of these black people running, to, run, running towards me and the rest of the crew, yeah. but, you know, to free, you know, knowing that they were all running to freedom. Uh, yeah. And that, that was, you know, amazing. And to put Harriet then as the, the focal figure who was making that happen, uh, is, you know, that, 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 that's incredible. It's really incredible, you know, to think about that. So I, I, would, I have so many more questions, but unfortunately our time has run out. I want to uh, give our thanks to Paul Taswell and Malia Lazou for this amazing discussion. Uh, our apologies uh, that Athena Vaughn was uh, having some technical difficulty and was unable to join us, but we will have her back for a future discussion. On behalf of the Boston Globe's Juneteenth Film Festival, Thank you all so much for joining us. Have a great afternoon.